Hi, this is Steve Rendell for FAIR TV. Here's a few things we noticed in the press this week. It's natural enough to despair about the quality of campaign coverage, and yet something always comes along to make you feel like things are getting even worse. Take the latest Obama campaign ad airing in Ohio. It faults Mitt Romney for having a Swiss bank account, wanting to maintain tax breaks for corporations that offshore jobs, and for once railing against deadly pollution from a coal plant. The ad dubs Romney, not one of us. Racist, right? Well, that's apparently how it struck Karen Tumulty of the Washington Post, who wrote that the language echoes a slogan that has been used as a racial code over at least the past half century. She finds two conservative bloggers to make this case, one of whom argues that a similar Romney ad would bring charges of bigotry. The whole thing is nonsense. As is clear, the ad is about the auto bailout and economic issues. In fact, most revealingly, the commercial closes with a clip of Romney slamming a coal plant for killing people. The point, Romney isn't as friendly to big coal as he says. The odd politics of such an appeal would make an interesting story, as opposed to Tumulty's scoop revealing a non-existent racist message. On October 22nd, viewers of the PBS NewsHour heard this in relation to the presidential debates. Iran's nuclear weapons program has been a particular flashpoint. A few weeks earlier, also on the NewsHour, viewers were told that Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez has continued to thwart American efforts on a range of international issues such as Washington's attempt to convince Iran's president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, to halt his country's pursuit of nuclear weapons. People covering the Iran story should know by now that there's no evidence the country is pursuing nuclear weapons and that its uranium enrichment program is routinely monitored by the International Atomic Energy Agency. There are questions about inspections at a particular military site, and there are allegations from specific countries about what Iran is up to. But if the Iraq war debacle taught us anything, it's that allegations and facts are two separate things. PBS should do a better job at separating the two. And here's something you don't see every day, or even any day. On October 23rd, MSNBC Morning Joe host Joe Scarborough offered a stinging critique of the White House's drone assassination program. That in itself was notable, but the most shocking part was not the right-leaning host's views. It was the point of view of Time columnist Joe Klein, often misidentified as a liberal, who went to ghoulish lengths to defend the killings. Scarborough pointed out that many innocents have died due to a targeting policy that all but ensures civilian casualties. Klein responded that the drones are decimating bad guys, and he marveled at how the killing can be done via joystick from California. That prompted Scarborough to declare that four-year-old girls are being blown to bits, the kind of talk you're not likely to hear very often in corporate media. And he added, Listen, I hate to sound like a code pink guy here. I'm telling you, this is causing this, quote, collateral damage that seems so clean with a joystick from California. This is going to cause the U.S. problems in the future. And that prompted Klein's most remarkable argument. The bottom line in the end is whose four-year-old gets killed. What we're doing is... Is, is does, limiting, does, does limiting, matter? limiting the possibility that four-year-olds here are going to get killed by indiscriminate acts of terror. What Klein is arguing for, killing people, children even, in order to limit the chances of future acts of terrorism against the United States, would almost certainly increase the chances of terrorist attacks. Not to mention the fact that the Time columnist morally reprehensible bottom line would seem to expressly encourage war crimes. This is Steve Rendell for FAIR TV.